So maybe I'm starting to actually with the sort of question uh, that we're being posed about, can, can uh, bank board do the job? I mean, the, um, the question is, what is the job? And um, um, I suspect that actually what we mean at the moment, a lot of us, is could they have prevented, if they'd been more on the ball, could they have prevented us being where we are? Um, well, I think actually the answer to that is almost certainly no. Um, um, you know, whatever Michael Lewis says in the big short, you know, and despite the Queen complaining to economists at LSE that they didn't see it coming, I think the truth is that the great majority of people, you know, did not see this coming. Of course, there are there were, there were a few people who said consistently, you know, from a long time ago that this was all leading to a crisis. But actually, you know, to pay too much attention to them is a sort of there's a grave error of ex post election bias. And okay, you can tell quite clearly from the prices of these things, okay, they all went wrong, that most people didn't see it coming. Okay? So I think it's quite unrealistic to uh, think that um, people on bank boards you know, could have somehow seen, seen what was going on. Because, you know, and, I, I, and I think for this discussion, I think we have to sort of, we probably all of us are thinking mainly about the independent people on, on bank boards rather than the, rather than the executive. Okay? And sort of, are people who have, um, who have sort of those that take a kind of more independent interest, um, could they have done any better? I think the answer also is kind of no. And the reason sort of Julian's really covered this really is that first of all, you know, sitting on, on the board of any large company, um, you kind of there's the the information you get is essentially largely dictated by the executive. The idea that somehow that you can be a kind of dummy, you know, a dummy management for the company is I think completely unrealistic. And then as Julian said earlier, you know, banks are a really special case in the sense that um, they're not only sort of big and complicated, like many other large, complicated companies, but the, kind of the, the nature of the company and the risks it faces kind of can be really substantially different, you know, almost one day to another. And we've seen lots of examples of, of that. Um, the, kind of, the, kind of risk, the risk um, monitoring systems and things like VAR have been getting sort of very bad press recently, but I think that's kind of unfair because it's sort of, at least, you know, at least it's something a lot better, I can say, from experience than some banks used to have. Right? Um, but the idea that these things are, in any sense, sort of incredibly reliable, and anyway, all they give you is a probability that something will happen. It doesn't tell you whether it will or won't. Um, so it's extreme. You can't expect bank boards, really, to somehow have some tremendous sort of uh, crystal ball on, on all this. Um, I was actually, um, in thinking about this evening, I actually... So I did go back to the uh, Vickers report and did a little word count on the, on the word board, you know, in the 300 and something pages. And there are 20 references to board. And they are almost all about the same thing, which is about, which is about the need for independence, right, in the, uh, in the ring-fenced, um, in the ring-fenced um, um, uh, retail bank, okay, and the need for that to be independent of the board of the wholesale bank. And I think that, you know, that makes a lot of sense. And actually, I think there's something very important that's kind of implicit in that, which is that um, the Vickers report took the view that actually, you know, implicitly, I think, and maybe explicitly, that the kind of a solution, a kind of contribution to a solution to the, some of these problems, you know, had to be seen as structural rather than, uh, rather than functional. So an example of sort of a, attempt, you know, the, kind of the Basel regulations are kind of a, Stream was an attempt to solve these problems functionally, to say, we're going to tell you kind of essentially how to deal with all these individual different, different little bits and pieces, and we'll come out with a manual that is so thick. In fact, sort of parenthetically, um, you know, if you, any of you had actually read the Basel II document, which regrettably I kind of did, it reads almost like a kind of, like a kind of consultant's report to the banking industry, sort of as if, as if they, the regulators, and the banks, were all essentially trying to solve the same problem. Well, of course, they're not trying to solve the same problem, because if they were, there'd be no need for regulation at all. The regulators are trying to solve a different problem because the assumption is, correctly, that, that banks privately will put insufficient weight on the social costs of failure. That's the whole purpose of this whole thing. And so, so and we've seen actually for years and you know, actually for uh, literally hundreds of years, the ingenuity of the banking system to get round of sort of regulations of kind of all kinds, particularly the more complex, the more the more kind of detailed and complex kinds. So I think this is just, I think this is an important lesson we've we've kind of learned. Um, and maybe just sort of one point to finish on is that sort of to, to underline the point I've just been making that um, if you have a look at 
an area where the problems were maybe most intense around kind of the um, uh, st structured products um, and tranche products around mm -hmm. based on, on, on mortgages. The kind of the incentive for banks to create these things was very substantially created by the regulators, okay, mm -hmm. who decided to give them extremely low capital requirements that actually meant it was sort of provided a tremendous incentive for banks to create these things and reduce their capital requirements, okay? Mm -hmm. And um, it's sort of unfair for regulators, I think, to complain that banks did this thing as the regulators provided the incentives. So I think probably the, the big lesson we've had learned from, from all this is that the kind of these detailed, these detailed approaches to try and control risk in the banking system, these are kind of just doomed to failure eventually, and the solution has to be, as I think both Julian and, um, and Claire were saying earlier, has to be much more structural. Okay, or, maybe final comment, or we just <coughs> take our chances, all right? That, um, that we've, Julian said we know what the costs are. I wouldn't completely agree with that. We've had one observation, okay, on really substantial costs, really substantial costs in 60 years. Okay? Going back to sort of George's point, there are benefits to the banking system. Okay? Are we prepared to take a one in something chance of this happening, okay? Or are we, are we prepared, you know, do we think it's better to do something really major, which may, may actually add a lot of costs and actually have, you know, some other disbenefits, okay?